Hello, welcome back to Pathfinder Kingmaker with me, Barden. Okay, let's pop out of here. Oh, he's gone. Tristan was there to have a chat with us, but I guess he missed it for the moment. So let's go find him and have a chat with him then. Let's get over here. I'll pop out there. So I guess this is coming up because we now have an extra uh, Yeah, let's leave. That we now have an extra ability. So there's too many put over there so I guess we just have to put up with it being there so 14 more days would mean that all of our advisors are available again Charles can be killed. That usually kind of scares me. Kind of feel like at some point it's not going to be the usual. Let's see. We've got uh, Delia, Island, and um, Valerie over there. It is done. Okay, just a bunch of citizens there. Oh, hi there. Let's have a chat with Hassan. The man bears you spreading his arms a little. Okay. Hassan from Absalom is happy to welcome you, Your Grace. Come take a look at the best squares we travel in Mercer's house. Oh. Okay. What is the secret of your success, Hassan? There's no secret. Perseverance, strength of character, attention to detail, the gift of persuasion, charm. All this, among many other things, are key to success in my profession. But if I did have a secret, who would I be to share it with anyone? The merchant laughs merrily, his hands rubbing his sides. Tell me more about yourself. My pleasure, Your Grace. The merchant smooths his moustache and commences his story with an air of importance, speaking in a sonorous voice, gesturing wildly. Hassel's family was not rich, and he, as many in Absalom, had to start from the very bottom. As a child, while his peers chased the pigeons and stole apples at the market, he worked at a tannery. Oh, I can still smell this disgusting stench. The man pulls out a heavy perfumed handkerchief and waves it in the air. Ahem. Well, the young apprentice worked hard, saved every coin, and soon managed to purchase that tannery from his former master. Then, as soon as he had enough money, he opened his own trading agency. After ten years, countless deals, and many tours in his caravan, Hassel was one of the most successful merchants in Absalom, thus writing his name indelibly in the history of the great city. The merchant looks at you with pleasure. Well, now, well, how was that? I'm looking for a writer so I can dictate my memoirs. Ha <laughs> ha! I think many would find it interesting and useful. To learn more about me. Where did you leave Absalom, the center of global trade, for some young barn in the Stolen Lands? Ha ha ha! This is a long story, and only your grace would be interested. Come, come. Tell me why you left Absalom. I insist. The merchant groans theatrically. Very well, as you wish, your grace. It was about a woman. When I was still young, I fell in love with the daughter of a judge. An important person in Absalom. For many years I tried to win her heart, but she was cold as stone. I should have given up, but this is not in my character. In the end, I did manage to win her love, but I was unready for it. Hassel swallows and rubs the back of his head. As Abadar, 
is my witness. The flames of hell burn inside this woman. I couldn't live with her for even six months. Tenderness and passion one day, screaming and scandal the next. Sometimes she would break into my office during business meetings to make a jealous scene. And sometimes pulled me by my collar from the finest taverns in town. I couldn't sleep. I was nervous all the time. And it started to affect my business. I realized there was nothing else to do but run. Leaving her remaining in the city would be impossible. Even in such a city as Absalom. Mm, interesting, so you abandoned your wife. I decided never to return. And I still fear that wild cat of a woman will follow my trail. As of stops, talking, stops talking and stares into space without blinking. Although sometimes after a couple of jars of wine, I still remember her. Perhaps it was I who unleashed this tornado in her. If somehow I behaved differently... Oh, we can't get the rest, okay. Yeah. So, yeah, she doesn't sound like the best wife in the world, but you could have at least just told her, listen, it's not working, I'm going to leave. That would be fine, but just kind of, like, running and, and not saying anything is a bit, it's a bit sketchy. But hey, people make mistakes, you know, but if you make a mistake, you kind of, you need to admit it and actually say it to the person, I feel. As usual, Virgil is taking a break from his labors in the blacksmith shop, reading a book. When he notices you, he stops reading and bows. Do you know anything about the ancient dwarven fortress in these lands? Nothing at all, your grace. These dwarf clans used to live in these lands. Or three, sorry. The Wardash, the Langbuck, and the Skeg. My family is Skeg. But we moved off to Mivan 200 years ago, together with Aldori, fleeing from the Conqueror. Our grandfathers made a safe bet that the Sword Lords would need swords. Anyhow, neither me nor my father have ever been to the old fortress. I vaguely remember from my grandfather's stories that Langbuck, that the Langbuck stronghold was supposed to be somewhere nearby, but no. I'd have no idea where to look for it. Well, luckily we kind of do. Well, tell me about yourself. What is there to tell you, Grace? I'm a blacksmith. My father was a blacksmith. My grandfather was a blacksmith. And his grandfather too. Besides, every one of them was remarkably fertile. So I have plenty of cousins, second cousins, third cousins, and all of them are blacksmiths too. Pretty much all the weapons in Niven were forged by someone from our family. That's why I moved away from the old home grounds. My skills are more useful here, that's for sure. You look a little unusual for a dwarf. Brittle sighs and runs his fingers through his hair. You, you, ex you expect to see a beard, eh? No offence, but what's the point of a beard? Especially when you're a blacksmith and working with fire. You burn it once, dip it into light and oil and catch a spark from the forge and your beard is history. You're better without one. What are you reading? Ferda looks a little confused. Well, different things. It's nice to take a rest with a good book. Just now, it's Valor and Honor, Ten Adventures of the Splendid Willis Gunderson in Absalom. Sounds interesting. Well, I have to go. So long. All the best, Your Grace. Actually, we don't have to go because we would actually like to see your goods because we need to sell some stuff. Okay, so chainmail. Okay. Yeah. Okay, so anything that isn't this one. Okay. So we're going to keep that around at the moment. Someone's going to get that. All of this can go. Okay. Take that. Um, we'll see about that. Troll Reaper. Hmm, sounds interesting. This plus one great axe deals additional 1d6 axe. Ha ha ha! Guess what, lady? You could give that to her, actually, yeah. I think that would be a good idea. Um, anyway. Um, let's deal for that. Now, so that's going to be good then. Because that means that we won't necessarily have to 
have to bring acid flask with good as everywhere. Right, so uh, we don't want to sell the camp. We sell that though. We sell the Warhammer. And we sell a bunch of these. Boom, 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 boom. Okay, so how about you? Hand axe. Okay, maybe you'll stick around. Okay, then we have a bunch of other stuff. Wand of lead blades. All melee weapons you are carrying when the spell is cast deal damage as if one size category larger than they actually are. Mm, interesting. Okay, um, so black apron. It's a lot to you, then all of those can go. Okay. Then all of these copper rings. Oh, what did I just sell? Okay, silver so buckle is fine. I'll sell all of this stuff as well. All of that can go. Oh, okay. Uh, all of you can go. All of that. And all of that. Ring of protection. I, I have to check if someone needs any of those, but I kind of feel like probably not at this stage. And those. Torx pendant. Um, I'm talking to dry it. I think we'll keep those for the moment. Well, weren't we supposed to go get something for that lady as well? I need to remember that as well. We're supposed to go buy. Yeah, I completely forgot about it. We met the OC nymph or something, and she was holding the loggers. Um, she's holding the loggers captive. Those, so that. What's this? Empty notebook. Okay, interesting. Copper ring. Copper ring. Go. Artificial flower we keep. Written orders we keep. White cogwheel ring. We have to keep that. Uh, toy knight. Toy dragon. Red cogwheel ring. Okay, where's the notable stuff? Make sure not selling anything that we definitely need. Staggler Broken Charm. I don't think we need that. I'm just worried about selling the thing that we needed to get into the yoke, but I think we're okay. Let's do a deal for all of that stuff. Okay, now let's go to our inventory. Right, so that does that, that not do does three to thirteen damage. This is three to ninety. Okay, so let's do that and then switch. Okay. She should be on weapon set one now. Okay, so she's going to be doing acid damage. Let's see, heavy cross crossbow plus one. I think that might be what. Can you use that? You can. Let's default him onto that for the moment so he stays back. 
we definitely need to sort you out a bit. Okay, but well for now that's what we're going to do there. We're then going to... We need to find either Harm or uh, Tristian. Well, we're, we're knocking about. So if anyone sees either... Shout out, people. Hello there, Priestess. You're not who we're looking for. Okay, let's go in from map. Ah, I should have noticed this before. To the house of Brutal. Yeah, this is very, very helpful. Who's over there? Oh, Tristian's over there. Okay, so let's go over to Tristian. See you guys. So Hassa, we've got you, and then the other, ah, that's where you are, okay. Let's talk to you. You might be the new merchant in town. A tanned half-elf merchant gives you a polite bow. His thick chestnut hair shows a slight touch of grey at the temple. It's a sure sign that he's... In the seventh decade, mature but not old age for a half elf. I'm happy to welcome you, Your Grace. I am Inio, wandering traveller in curiosities. I have come to your lands recently and hope to stay here for a while until the roads call me again. Tell me about yourself. I prefer to travel the wild and sparsely populated corners of the continent. The farther I wander from the big cities and trade routes, the less competition I have from the rich merchant guilds. In my travels, I sometimes manage to acquire true curiosities. Of course, sometimes I get into trouble instead. Few can boast of escaping a giant scorpion by climbing a mammoth cactus. That certainly is interesting. Okay, tell us about your wares. So we have a long sword plus two. Okay. Um, who do we have? You have your bastard sword, which is just masterwork. Okay. You could use the long sword. So it would be more minimum damage. Okay, and what else? Other than that, not really much. There certainly is. Well, it certainly is very expensive. <laughs> I don't think we can actually afford it. Boots of battle kind. These boots grant us where plus five confidence bonus on mobility check. Okay, that's certainly interesting. Okay, so you're definitely someone to continue checking in with. Then we have you. A woman in rich gold embroidered cloth clothes greets you with a black bow. Her eyes the color of molten gold shine brightly in her dusky face. Greetings, noble ruler of these lands. My name is Arsino. I'm a messenger from the temple of Abar and Absalom, and I came here assuming the citizens of your own barony could use the services of a priest. What services do you offer? I can sell you various divine spell scrolls. They're quite useful, even if you don't have anyone in your party who can read them. When you are in the settlement, or indeed any place with a cleric, we need to help you. Excuse me. You need only open your bag and choose the scroll you wish to cast. I'll be happy to read it for you. However, take care of there in the wilderness. The scroll is useless without someone who can read it. To use the scroll on your journeys, 
You need a spellcaster whose magical training covers such spells or someone skilled in magical devices. Okay, sounds good. Tell me about Abadar. With pleasure. Abadar is the god of cities, law, merchants, and wealth. The core of his teachings is simple. Law and order allow civilization to develop, which allows people to live in peace and prosperity. If Aristotle favors old customs, small settlements, and simple trades like hunting, then Abadar patronizes development, complex trades, order, and entrepreneurship. We see. Each priest of Abadar finds something personal in serving him. Some believe that law is the main aspect of their faith, and they guard it zealously. Others put the well-being of their society above all. I personally follow Abadar's teaching that say civilization must penetrate the wildest savage lands and help people live in comfort and safety. So that means that um, our Barney is one of the wildest savage lands and you're trying to bring Abadar to us, I guess. You're an Asimar, if I'm not mistaken. I suppose it's easy to tell, isn't it? Yes, I'm an Asimar, though I'm not sure how or when the blood of Celestials appeared in my family. Among all my relatives and own ancestors, I'm the only one who inherited it. I must admit, I'm glad this lot fell to me. It draws more attention to me. A useful trait for a priest who wishes to gather a congregation. How did you come to my Barney? That is a long story, and not a terribly exciting one. I was born and raised in Absalom, but I saw a little point in staying there. What's the purpose in promoting the fate of Abadar, in a city already so large and well developed? No, I was drawn to backwater places, where civilization was just beginning to emerge. It gives me such joy to see the first stones of a new settlement being laid. Or to see wilderness that once harbored monsters and criminals become a safe, cozy home for people. I've devoted my life to my travel, choosing to visit places like your Barney. Allow me to, to say, it's a place after my own heart. The city growing over the remains of a branded Lord's Lyre is exactly the sort of triumph of civilization Avatar Abadar prescribes. I hope my skills as a priest will be of service to these lands and their denizens. That's pretty nice. You were so eager to help the citizens. Why do you charge for your services? Well, ev everyone needs to charge for the services. It's part of Abadar's philosophy. The rules of trade and exchange develop for a reason. They help bring order to our world, and they must be broken without need. The opportunity to get what one desires for no effort has a corrupting effect on the soul. Pretty true. Okay, I have to go. Thanks for chatting with us, though. Right. We were going to come over here. Because Tristian is over here. We need to chat with you. Now, this is a lot of talking, but... Um, I, I'm happy with it. I hope you're happy with it, too. Because... The thing is that... No stopping now. Games like this... It's... It's about the story, it's not just about going out and fighting things, so let's see what he has to say. Tell me about yourself. About myself? I wouldn't know where to begin. Tristan pauses for a moment in thought. You know my name, my fate. I follow Saren, Saren Ray, and I've travelled from the Padisha Empire of Kalash. To here, what else do you want to know? Forgive me, but from your manner and appearance, you don't strike me as Kelosite. Tristian smiles softly. You have nothing to apologize for. Truly, I have received my name and appearance from my parents, who had come to Kalesh from afar. I never knew them, for the fate had separated us when I was young. So I grew up in Kalesh, raised by the followers of Sarenrae. My home is where my heart is, within the temples of the great goddess, among the wise and generous men who took upon themselves the care of a child that was so unlike them. I learnt mercy and patience at an early age, and in it these virtues that have made me the man I am, and it is these virtues that have made me the man I am today. Do you enjoy travelling? Christian nods, his eyes light up. Oh yes, no library and no archive, however large. Would have ever allowed me to learn as much of the world as I have in my journeys. 
I was only outside the temple walls. I realized every living being is a world unto themselves, a world where many con contradictions and passions coexist. Each realm leaves its mark on the lives that live there, only by visiting it, by breathing the same air, walking on the same soil, can you understand its people, what drives them, what frightens them, their dreams, and how they honor their gods. Doesn't being outside the temple make you uncomfortable? It's pretty clear that it doesn't. Tristan shakes his head. There are many ways to honor one's god, Rene. It is true shrines play a role in the lives of many of the faithful, but even more find other ways to serve Saren Ray. The healing of life values good deeds above all else. I cannot stand by and watch evil claim others. Christian thinks for a moment, then raises an eyebrow. Perhaps that is another reason why I chose to go on my pilgrimage, leaving behind the temples of Kalesh. Christian touches the chest. My faith is in my heart and in my hands. Millions honor Saren Ray in her temples. My soul is filled with joy when I think of their devotion to the goddess. Nevertheless, my path is a different one. Do you know where you're going next? No, my thoughts were far from it, for my mission here is not yet done. Tristan stares at you in surprise. Why do you ask? Do you wish me to leave your lands? Of course not, you are my comrade in arms. I trust you completely. Tristan's face lights up. Thank you, I am pleased I could be of assistance. Okay, well, let's discuss something else. What can you tell me of Saren Ray? Saren Ray is the goddess of temperance and patience. She teaches us compassion for the weary and mercy to those who go astray. What would you like to know of her? I'd like to hear about the history of your faith. There is much to tell, but I'm afraid I would miss the mark, and I fear I would bore you. Is there something specific you wish to know? How did Saren Ray come to be? Saren Ray is one of the Glorians of Glorian's eldest deities. Once she was an angel that had gathered the armies of her celestial allies behind her. The battle in which she showed her valor decided the fate of a whole world, and in her victory she was awarded with divinity. In the sacred text, Saren Ray is shown as a beautiful bronze-skinned maiden, her hair dancing flame. Christian smiles slightly. But her appearance is not what matters, it is the grace she brings with her touch, healing and salvation. Tell me about this battle you mentioned. What was the act of valor, Saren Ray? Her greatest moment of glory is her battle against the monstrous Rovagug, who threatened to destroy Glorian. Saren Ray delivered a strike that staggered the horrendous creature and allowed her allies to shackle. Once a rough beast was captured, the goddess split the earth and the gods threw the behemoth into the depths. Once it was done, the goddess sealed the pit, commanded her faithful to stay away from the scar that was left in the lad. Christine falls silent for a moment. Alas, mortal beings are imperfect. Not even the most faithful among us can always follow the deity's commandments, even when such commandments are meant to save the world and their followers. I, for one, pray the goddess is never again as furious as she was with Gormas. You mentioned Gormas. What happened to it? Tristan sighs. An error of fate, perhaps a lesson, but it speaks of the dangers when one listens to mortal words and one stops listening to their fate. Sarah forbade her followers from coming near the place of Rovagug, Rovagug's imprisonment, but some of her priesthood misread her will and began to preach of a sacred place where the mightiest of temples dedicated to goddess were to be constructed. The people listened to these sermons and went forth to the land, touched by Saren Ray's scimitar. On the scar that sealed the well, they founded Gormos, a holy city that was to become the greatest monument to Saren Ray. Unsurprisingly, after the city was built, faithful from all glory and traveled there to worship. Saren Ray sent omens and visions urging her followers to leave this dangerous place, filled with the dark will of the shackled Ravagung. But in their pride, the people misrepresented or ignored her signs altogether, for they had already come under Ravagung's influence. Finally, the goddess sent her herald to the city, but the fanatics killed him. 
Realizing the people had turned from her, the enraged goddess smote Garmos, raising it from the face of glory with a single strike of her scimitar. Christian shakes his head. Today is called the Pit of Gormos, a well of pain and suffering. Tell me about the Pit of Gormos. Christian shakes his head. It's a great crevice in eastern Kazmaran. The lands surrounding it are dead, soaked in poison. The Pit of Gormos seems bottomless until someone dares to gaze into its depth. All who have dared to tell of a strange distant globe, the globe that followed them in their dreams ever since. Throughout all of history, the Pit of Gormos has spawned creatures, hideous beasts of overwhelming power and drive by driven by one single desire to destroy everything they see. Some were defeated, such as the nightmarish Ulanat, whose carapace to this day towers above the capital of Orisian. Others proved too strong to be defeated by mortal hands. Christian frowns. The most terrible of them all was the Tarask, the Armageddon engine, who to this day lies dormant deep beneath Avistian, or sorry, Avistan. Have wars ever been waged in Saren Ray's name? Tristan sighs. Alas, yes. Terrible battles were once fought between the followers of Netis, Norgrubur, Norgr and Saren Ray in the lands now known as Brahadun. To my shame, I must admit that this conflict was started by my brothers and sisters. They came to a foreign land to make way for the goddess's light with sword and fire. That calamity became known as the Oak Wars, a catastrophe that led to the inheritors of Rahadun to deny all gods, banning all fates from their lands. Alas, the mortal vessel is imperfect. Even a pure fate may be distorted by blind ambition. Christian goes silent for moments. And great suffering may occur in its name. Okay, enough. I want to ask you about something else. What are the teachings of Saren Ray? Solar flame goddess is the light of salvation. Even to those who have been forsaken by the other gods, she teaches us mercy and forgiveness, for as long as they may be useful to a soul's salvation. You make it sound like the followers of Saren Ray trying to find it. Okay, yeah. You make it sound like the followers of Saren Ray will try to find good, even in a bandit with a knife to their throat. Do not mistake compassion for weakness, Rene. One hand of Saren Ray is shrouded in healing light. The other holds a scimitar. Following their goddess, the priests learn to wield their this weapon starting in childhood. They do not hesitate to use it if a dispute cannot be settled peacefully. Saren Ray preaches mercy, yet her compassion is not infinite. We give a second chance to all who ask, but if they reject it, if they persist in their sins, they will face the goddess's retribution. Are there any, are there any undeserving of mercy? Tristian blindly gazes past you into the distance for several moments. When he speaks again, his voice is quiet, reflective, as if e echoing his thoughts. Undeserving of mercy. Would even Sanre herself find a question to... Tristian shudders, as if awakening from a trance. Forgive me. I, your words, they, they are not one easy ones to reconcile. And even priests such as I, we debate them to this day. What is the point at which a soul is irredeemable? Or is it a failing of the priests themselves? These are difficult questions you ask, Renee. Questions wise men have debated for centuries. Does a being that has been tainted by evil to its very root, that rejects its own salvation, still deserve compassion? Can those compelled to do evil by others still seek forgiveness? There's no easy answers on these issues, among Saren Ray's followers. As for me, I believe every soul carries the potential for goodness within. No matter the crime, the guilty may find forgiveness if they repent and cast off the evil they led to the, that led to the deed. I believe that this will this with all my heart, Ray. Okay. 
I like this idea, even though following through with it demands a lot of spiritual strength. It does, yet I think you are equal to the task, Renee. No, I am certain of it, and one needn't worship Saren Ray to practice mercy. All are capable of it. What are your duties as a follower of Saren Ray? My goddess strives to see the best, even the dark gods. She never abandons the hope of their redemption. The priests of Saren Ray follow her teachings, akin to the healing light herself, who, who uh, emanates, wants, and heeds the call of those in need. We aid the suffering in body and spirit throughout glory. The priests of Saren Ray are willing to help anyone, no matter the fate of the one in need. Each plea must be heard. Every misfortune deserves compassion. But it is a peasant seeking a blessing for, for the harvest, or a murderer seeking repentance the night before their execution. Sometimes the mercy of Solar Flame Goddess is the last thing that can save one's soul from ruin. We have no right to withhold it from the truly repentant. Okay, let's ask you about something else. How is Saren Ray worshipped? Many worship Solar Flare Goddess in her temples. Some make the pilgrimage to the Everlight Oasis. But even those who do not serve the Goddess directly rarely shun the festivities dedicated to her. The Sun Rot Festival for one. What are the temples of Saren Ray like? Saren Ray shrines are often open to the sky and to the Goddess's life-bringing sunlight. Her light fills the temple and shrouds the parish in warmth and grants us blessing to all in need. In Kalesh, crowds gather during the services so that all may feel the blessing of the Goddess. The most ingenious devices are constructed by some of the faithful to please the Goddess. I've seen a temple in Sar to, of Saren Ray which has a complicated array of mirrors, all to direct the light of the sun to the altar. Tell me of the Everlight Oasis. I've never been there, but the stories say it is a wondrous place, sacred to Saren Ray's faithful. The oasis is located in Zelshavar, Zel which lies in Kasmoron. Pilgrims from throughout Glorian travel there, seeking the goddess's blessing. According to legend, the waters of the Everlight Oasis are imbued with healing properties, and anyone who bathes in, in them shall be cured of any ailment. Christian smiles and thought, just imagine, a place where people from all around the world come together to worship. What stories they must share. What is the Sunrock Festival? The Sunrock Festival takes place on the day of the summer solstice, when the prayers of our flock can reach sound ready the easiest. On this day, Kalesh blooms with colour. In each corner of the Padisha, Padisha Empire, the people praise their goddess by dancing and singing, sending off fireworks and flying kites. Hope this beautiful custom shall one day reach your lands as, as well, Renee. This is all I want to know about this. Okay. We're here, the more it seems your Saren Ray is Okay, no, no, let's just say that. I've heard enough of Saren Ray. What brought you to these lands? I've heard rumours. They see these lands are cursed, and the curses are growing stronger. As if something is granting them power. I could not ignore such rumour. What curses are you talking about? Tristan cocks his head to the side and wonder. Do you not see? Every word uttered in the heat of an argument turns into a prophecy here, just waiting to fulfill itself. And if it were only for the people, the land itself is seeding with curses, so ancient their origin are impossible to trace. Take the abandoned temple of Erastiel, where we met. What happened to it? What forces compelled the priests to leave such a magnificent temple behind to the whims of nature? Will we ever know? I myself was nearly slain by beasts. Fortunately, he came along, following Jahad, and saved me. I owe you a great debt. You come a great distance indeed. Christian laughs heartily. When you look at it that way, then yes. But please, do not think that I came all the way from Kalesh because of mere curiosity. I was wandering long before that. It is a custom of our fate. The farther our paths take us, the more people we may help. Where did Jahad see you in his premonition? Saren Ray sees all the good gods and goddesses as her allies. 
Many fought alongside the goddess against the menace of Robogood, Erastiel among them. By offering my prayers to Sarnre, I let her know of my misfortune in the Temple of the Elf. The merciful goddess did not ignore my plea, but whom could, have, could she ask for aid than Erastiel, whose fate is strong in these lands? Erastiel has sent Jahod a sign, and you came just in time to rescue me, Christian sighs. To tell the truth, I was certain my journey was at an end. Those creatures were to be the death of me. You spent much time here. What do you think the future holds for these lands? These are cruel lands. As I came here, I bore witness to much pain and suffering, but I've seen equal kindness among those, those seeking to protect themselves and their loved ones. The people of the stolen lands are resolute and true to themselves. I admire their strength. Let's change the subject. You called yourself the Chosen of Sarnre. What did you mean by that? Sorry, that was a mere jest. Other acolytes at my temple used to tease me by that title. This should tell you how pious and devoted I was compared to them. And yet, my faith is strong. Sarnre knows this and protects me in times of great peril. If something ever threatens my life, by her divine powers I am transported to a safe location. Uh, that's not really true because we saw you almost get killed so yeah um, okay I should go cheers now we are going to quickly pop in to the tavern and hope we find Haram in here where are you hanging out old friend Haram Yeah, so no adventuring or fighting this time, but plenty of plenty of really good story. Okay, so there's a Miri. Right, so let's go to the second floor. There quickly cover that. Let's come down here. Got a citizen, lots of citizens. Okay. Yeah, onwards, etc. Et ah, you you took me before as well. Your how? So you can't open any of those doors. Where are you, Harm? Okay, so it's only for up here. So let's pop on down. It's only you in here. Right, well, let's get outside. And Mary, if you see harm, please let me know. Where else could he be though? Because like, that's all of the... All the places in the city really, isn't it? Because look, if we look at this... Oh, there he is! Ah, ha, ha! Okay. He's kind of... Tucked away over here. There we go. That's really cool. And as I said before, I hope that as our Barney improves that it changes as well. It looks like it will though. Okay, so Ham is somewhere around here. There he is. Alright buddy, we need to have a quick chat. Are you sure you want to see the Dwarven wounds? Why open up all wounds? Ham looks down and strokes his beard a few times before answering. I'm not sure, Renee. This will this will likely bring nothing but pain. I suspect I will regret going to the ruins. But nevertheless, I ask, please take me there. Well, we're going to take you there, so no problem. 
Okay, well, sure, no problem. Thank you for the conversation. Let's talk later. Harm nods with dignity. I'll be happy to continue our conversation later. Cool. Let's end our dialogue. Okay. And right. What we're going to do is we're going to very quickly get ourselves on the road so that next time we don't have to worry too much about that. So I think over here is where we exit. Well, let me check something. Uh, where are we? The journal. Okay. Nature of the beast. Okay, yeah. Prove your work. Okay, yes. You want to kill more things, obviously. Why wouldn't you? Where's the one about um, helping those people with trauma, trouble, religious reward? Just reward. Legacy Predator tokens, there we are. The Nixie out oh, cases, the Nixie. Okay, we could buy them from so there's a priestess here. Can we buy them from her? Predator tokens. She's somewhere around right here, isn't she? Maybe not somewhere around here. This is over this way. Let's find the priestess. Okay, do you sell better tokens? Oh, we can't even talk to you. Okay, so you definitely don't sell better tokens. Okay, let's go. Right, so... She still has her dex, this character. Okay, so I guess... He's okay and that's weird. He's fine, but she isn't. So, I guess she didn't... She didn't rest. Oh. And then, now nah, there we go. Okay. So before we go into the rooms, we should really go talk to that dude. In the lone house. This part. I'm wondering though, is that where the one that the Nixie was sending us to lives? So maybe we should go there first. Okay, so it looks like go this way, and that should give us the yeah. Let's enter there. Who claims land claims his pain and his death? The mad prophet. Right now, let's move up, guys. Hi there. Okay. Wolf from Silent Pack. Okay. Well, looks like you're gonna attack us, so. Repent. Can you make an epic pose? I need inspiration. Okay, uh, you can last very long. Okay, let's continue on. 
You forced my and hand. Our leader charged forwards. <laughs> 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 Of a cave there, there's something here to get as well. March on. Okay, and something to collect there. Thank you. Let's quickly check them out. Okay, so we're gonna quickly head into the cave. So this doesn't look like... I think we've been here before, actually. Um, no, I think we've maybe been somewhere similar to here before. Not actually here. But it's here. So, we should get attacked again. Yeah. No stopping now. Charge! I'll try to make this swift. So from what I remember of this fight. When we move in here, other wolves are gonna kinda spawn back here and come attack us. It is done. What for Gorum? Serves you right. Look at me, okay, so he needs to be helped. Last guy now. Okay. Thank you. And then let's get everyone here. Oh, look at this. Thank you. Now. Anything else doesn't look like it. Okay, so we're gonna leave here and then we're probably gonna end the video. So let's get ourselves out and get us back out onto the road. So down here. See if we end over there, so get myself to the zone point. There it is there. Okay. Get over there. I feel a bit happier now that uh, Haram is maining his He's maining his uh, crossbow instead of his mace. Okay. 
it's next to 12. Okay, so let's head down here. May we have a moment of yeah, yeah. respite? Okay, so let's just quickly camp. Oh, there's enemies anymore? Okay. Well, let's exit because we're gonna end. Okay, so we're gonna end there. So, as I always, do hope you have enjoyed and. I hope to see all of you next time. You Goodbye. Thanks for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, maybe you'll hit the subscribe button there on the right and check out some other videos here on the left.